For part C, we need to rotate our load impedance, which is plotted right here. And we need to rotate it away from the load or towards the generator. So we need to go in this clockwise direction towards the generator. And we need to we want to rotate it a distance of 0.3 lambda. So we need to know our starting location. So if you draw a straight line from the center of the Smith chart through ZL to the outer scale, uh, this wavelength towards generator scale, we can read off this value 0.338. And we need to then add our 0.3 to it. So our ending position will be 0.3 lambda plus 0.338 lambda which is 0 0.638 lambda. So we would could try to look for that value, but the Smith chart, this scale, the wavelengths towards the generator here starts at 0, goes all the way around, and you wind up with 0 0.5 when you come all the way around. So there's only half a wavelength shown on the Smith chart. As a result, we are going to be passing through this where it starts over again from 0.5 back to 0 again. So the value we actually need to rotate to is 0.638 minus 0.5. There's a lambda for both of these. Because we're passing this point where it switches from 0.5 to 0, we're starting over at 0 again. So we need to get rid of 0.5 and that will tell us to stop when we get to 0.138 lambda. And we can see that here on the scale. So if we draw another straight line from that point to the center of the Smith chart and have the same radius, because we're rotating ar that point around the circle of constant radius, we would get our z in dot. And then we can read off the value of z in. z in would be equal to 0.74 plus j 0.85. Now don't forget that we have to denormalize. So to get true values, we'd have to take little z in, multiply by z naught, and we would get 74 plus j 85 ohms.